So in video uh, STB339, where we did the keyboard reassembly of this keyboard, there was two white keycaps. I don't know if you can see this down in here or not, or, or key switches. There, the three key switches here have an orange bottom, and there was two white ones that had white bottoms here. And I installed them in these two positions intentionally, wondering what they were about. Uh, so uh, subscriber Bryce Janot, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, in the comments mentioned that maybe those were used for the return key because having two regular switches makes the return key really heavy. Well, that return key is really heavy to push, and if I push these together, it feels much more like a regular key cap. So I think he was absolutely correct that these two key switches with the white bottoms have a lighter spring in them and were meant to go behind the return key. So I'm going to once again unsolder key switches and move some stuff around uh, and put this thing back together right. You know, Bryce, thank you. Uh, great comment and I think you were absolutely spot on it's appreciated so with that said let's tear into this hopefully for the last time and hopefully I won't break anything so let's get some get some room here plan here is just unsolder the four key switches, get them removed from the frame, and solder them back in the correct positions. Oh, that's tight. You know, it's just really obvious feeling the tension here. Because that return key is really stiff, that that's absolutely the correct uh, answer here. The return key is on these two which is here and there's definitely a difference in the pressure there so I believe this is well worth doing so I intentionally like I said before installed the two white bottom key switches in this position here just so a they weren't lost in the array someplace and they'd be easy to get at even though I really didn't know what they were for uh, I've got the desoldering station hopefully warmed up. Yeah, it's got a fair amount of solder in it. Hopefully it's clean enough to do a good job on the four of these. Make sure I'm on the right ones here. I think it may need to be cleaned. Well, we'll go ahead and clean it. That was awfully rough sounding. Yeah, it's very full. Well, there we knocked it loose. That filter is not too bad, so I will continue to use that filter. Just knocked a little bit of the stuff stuck to the sides in here out. I'm getting to a point where I think I'm going to order a replacement for this tube. It's pretty gnarly inside. It's seen a lot of desoldering. And I'll dispose of that. And put this back together. I've tried to get into the habit of cleaning the desoldering station after you know I'm through using it. Just not disciplined enough to to do that. Even though I should be. Hopefully these will release without too much work. 
see that this one really didn't. So let's see if the none of those have come loose. Why? Hmm. Let me get glasses with some better visibility here. Reheating and reheating. Oh, okay, that one is loose. That one is not. That one is not. Oh, shoot. I hate to put fresh solder on these and go again. I really got into the space of abusing these. With this much rework. afraid of lifting foil here. Wow. Yeah, I don't... Shoot, it shouldn't be... Are you floating in there, or are you... Still being held in very tightly. You know, it's not like I've got a airtight seal on the other side of the PCB. Filled back up with solder. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, I'm really not understanding why that's being such a bear this time around. I am going to end up lifting foil here. And I'm going to be really unhappy. Uh, I almost think the pad may already be starting to lift. Let's see, I'm set to a little under three. I'm going to bring the heat up a little bit. Actually, the tool sounding not right again. Almost like it's plugged up again. Maybe I need to put a new filter in. Maybe that filter is in worse shape than it appears. Panels around the edge in here that the air is drawn up through, and I'm going to make sure all those are clear. Probably doing this off camera, apologies. <laughs> Vacuum pump sounds fine. I may have a 
plug actually in the uh, inlet here itself. Oh, I do. I can feel it there. Sounds better. Yeah, there was something caught in the tip here. Oh, this little wire is getting rather warm. It actually comes with the tool for exactly this purpose. here. I'm going to move over to the switches on the return key. If I have issues getting these loose as well. Oh yeah, that sounded better. Instantly loose. So I can see the pins moving on both of those. They, Those came loose just like they should have, so... I think the issue here was the tool, the soldering tool being. These are a bit of a pain to work up out of here. Should be this one and this one. So really, I've handicapped myself here by not properly cleaning the tool and changing the filter out, which has resulted in me really stressing the pads over here. Uh, the little ceramic filters are not cheap, but they're sure better replaced than actually screwing up a PCB. I'm going to add just a bit of fresh solder on these again. Hopefully this time they will just come loose and life will be good. Ah, ah. Tool sounds good. Ah. Oh yeah. Sounded ah. much better. Ah. Ah. Yeah, he's loose. And he's loose. So uh, learn from my lesson there. Uh, properly clean tools make all the difference. These should have come out like that the first attempt. And so there we go. Set the keyboard aside. Pull out my little test rig. And just make sure we haven't damaged any of these. Continuity mode. Uh, and just make sure I haven't damaged any of these. All the braid does is just make it really easy to just get contact to the key switch. Seems perfectly normal. Oh, I'm creating a short over here by leaning on the leads. Seems good. Yep, that all looks good. So the reality, because of the design of the PCB, 
is we ultimately have an extra key switch because the key switch that goes in this position here there's, it's actually jumpered PCB trace across here so this key switch is not used it's just here to balance the, uh, the return key that you know the fact that the switch makes or breaks contact doesn't matter so if I had had a bad switch it could conceivably live in that spot so let's go ahead and see if we can get these to go back in Another lesson I learned in the previous reassembly is I soldered the two switches for the return key independently, and one of them was a little bit askew, and that made the key super stiff. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put the return key on. Yeah, that definitely makes a difference. Uh, I'm going to put it on just so that I know the switches are, are at least in alignment to each other so one of them isn't binding. Yeah, that makes that return key much, will be much easier to use. So again, thank you, Bryce. Uh, great suggestion. Definitely appreciate the feedback. Wish I'd have been a little more astute when I tore it down to have noticed that but I wasn't make sure those were in flush and one of the things I've learned about soldering these is it really becomes a two-step process the initial solder pass flows solder down through the via to the pin but I really can't get what looks like a, a decent solder joint based on having you know the little cone of solder come up for mechanical strength. The mechanical strength here shouldn't be super important. The switch bodies are held in the metal frame so there shouldn't be a whole lot of stress on the PCB itself but I'm still going to essentially fillet these and fill them in just because the we're no one meanies to do that, and that really turned out to be best to do when I think a two-step process is I'm doing it here. And I believe we're good. That is most excellent. Take up the photographs here so I know what keys go back where. Tend to get these on upside down, upside down. So the zeros here. The decimal point is over here. Shift is of course right here. There's an enter key on this keypad, and there's a, no, this guy goes upside down, there should be a delete key here, break here, clear space, One of these is the minus. I do believe it's this one. And I've got line feed, which sits here, which means by default the quote key goes here, but I, I I'm, well, the orientation of the switch will tell me. So the double quote is up, otherwise the switch body would be weirdly faced. I'm still kind of mystified by this not this nine key alignment being just so odd now 
and see the eight is well aligned there. And the nine once again has that word offset. It really is the key cap, which is just really weird. It just really is weird. Uh, you know, I wonder if it came off a different keyboard, perhaps. You know, functionally, it doesn't make a difference. It just looks a little odd. Well, anyhow, yeah, that is much better, much easier to hit. much easier to press so uh, very happy with that uh, once more again Bryce thank you for the uh, comment and for helping me get this back a little closer to how it originally was you know there's part of me that could have gone through and numbered every one of the switches and made sure they went back in the same places and had I been doing you know a deep restoration I might have taken the time to do that uh, but for what I'm doing here, uh, you know, it's for personal use. It's not for display in a museum or something. Uh, it's perfectly adequate. So with that, I will wrap this follow-up video up, and we'll talk soon.